Thank you. Um, so my name is Aurélien, I'm from France. And uh, I'm not a software engineer or coder or whatever. I'm uh, in a business, um, in a legal business. Um, I did some games. I did a lot of serious games, which I sold in to many companies and thousands of employees are playing those serious games, but not made with Godot. And on the side, as a hobbyist, I do uh, Godot stuff and I try to do such thing, uh, things that are much more fun than, than the serious games I do uh, in real life, let's say. Um, and so I'm... Um, I have come across this problem very often. I think when I look at discords and forums, etc., of a lot of projects um, going on and nothing really emerging from that, no games being done. And I have asked myself the question, how do you really get yourself motivated to get a game done? And I think that's a, a big issue in, in a game dev world, I guess. Uh, and, and of course, myself as a hobbyist, I, I face that all the time. I spent a few hours here and there in the evenings and the weekends to try to get something done. And so I have put together a lot of strategies to try to motivate myself and maybe sharing that could be helpful for, for you guys. So maybe I'll start with showing you uh, very quickly the project I'm working now right, on, right, right now. If I can get rid, rid of PowerPoint on the screen. Ah. So you guys will say, this is a problem with Windows. It should be li Linux. It would work much better, but uh, this seems to be working. OK, so I'm cheating a bit and filling in my George of, uh, my of, of uh, heart. So this is a game about a little blue rabbit running around in this little rabbit world. And um, what he's doing is he's kind of um, trying to collect hearts. To collect hearts, he has to recycle the bombs this stupid wolf is uh, putting there. So he goes to a recycler, puts the bomb in there, makes a strange noise, and he gets like a blue heart. So as I'm cheating, I have al already a lot of hearts. And what he can do is uh, grow trees. So he would buy a tree, let's say, with those hearts, um, put them somewhere. Let's, let's say he gives the hearts and, and, gives and, and gets a tree for that. So that makes other rabbits appear. So um, after growing a lot of hearts, he will start having a lot of rabbits um, around in his place. Um, and he will do quests with the rabbits. So, for example, he would go there and the rabbit would ask him for something. So, like this one wants a carrot. Um, and, well, a lot of other stuff like that. So, he can go and get a carrot, open doors. Another funny thing he can do is um, get a bubble gun. So, this is a non violent game. So, um, you can see what he will do with that if I get the button right. So, he can shoot like little bubbles and put the wolf into a bubble, so that kind of freezes him for a few seconds, so he gains more time. Because time is of the essence, because each time a bomb is exploding, he loses a heart. So he has to manage his hearts, getting hearts, not getting hearts. He cannot die, so it doesn't really matter about any if he explodes with a bomb, he just restarts, or if he goes too close to a wolf, he goes back to his uh, uh, bond point, or if he goes into the water, let's swim a little bit, he'll go back. He'll never die. So you can see there are also like boxes uh, hanging around. That's also is part of the gameplay. There's this plane with another wolf uh, dropping like evil boxes, I would call them here. And he can recycle them, get hearts too. So I won't spoil all of the game, but that's basically what I've been working uh, on during my, <laughs> my evenings. <laughs> 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 uh, and so, well, I, uh, thanks to my wife for bearing with me on that. And my kids. <laughs> well, actually, my kids like the game, so that's also rewarding, let's say. Okay, so that's about the game itself. So back to uh, PowerPoint now, if I can manage to get it on. So I'll just maybe turn off the game. So that's how it is. So um, know your enemy. I mean, I guess my main enemy there is um, usually motivation. So lack of motivation, decrease of motivation. Leads to pro procrastination. Uh, we all know what that is about. You know, uh, I'll do it maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow or after, after tomorrow, and then abandon projects and you find something new which sounds sexy and you start this new thing and then you forget about the other one and you pile up projects. Uh, that's a bit sad. Um, and of course, if you spend only a few hours here and there on a project, you have this feeling of non achievement that comes very fast and that kind of kills your motivation. Um, so, well, there's no magic solution, of course, but I guess my solution was always to try to gamify game dev. So I'm looking for the pleasure factor. I have to have fun doing stuff. Um, and it's a bit like a game. 
I have to obtain fast, visible results. So uh, like a game, there's also a big challenge, but that's not a problem. It's there anyway. I don't have to planify it. What I have to planify is try to get fast, visible results, to get the pleasure of achievement and get on with my project. And Godot is just perfect for that because you get so fast results. And I think it's really, that is also maybe a key for its current success. And uh, what I do for that is I try to do what I can rather than what I must or should. I really try to do what my capacities enable to me, me to do. With a little bit of challenge, of course, I always try to progress, but I don't start scoping crazy stuff. There's also a classic thing um, in not only in game dev, game dev, but everywhere for motivational coaches and all that, they would tell you do lists uh, because lists um, enable you to have targets. Now, of course, if you start doing a 10 page list, then you have the reverse effect uh, of non-achievement. So what I do is I do a list with like five, six points maximum, and then I have the pleasure of striking them, uh, them out. And sometimes I add some new stuff, but I try not to do like a extensive list. So that's kind of general, general speech about all that. So setting achievable goals um, and progress thereon, you could ask yourself, well, why 3D? Are you crazy? You're already raising the bar somehow. And I'm not sure that's true, actually, because I think 3D is pretty manageable. Um, and also, again, the pleasure factor for me, maybe that's the way my brain works or maybe the human brain works like that. There's nothing more pleasant than putting your little character in 3D on the ground somewhere and moving him around in 3D. That's a very motivating factor, I think. So I think 3D is very manageable. And honestly, as a, again, I'm not a coder, I'm not a software developer, and I can do it so anybody can do it, honestly. <laughs> um, also about coding patterns and rules and all that stuff, I read about a lot about you guys, software engineers, you, you're very into that. And I read once an article from Juan, I think, where I, s I wrote, I, I, I saw you have to do stuff quick and dirty, and I like that because yes. I do things very dirty. So. Uh, I liked reading that. Um, I try to do stuff really quick and dirty. Um, the idea for me being really getting something playable quickly. What I'm interested in is uh, getting the stuff done and pff, I don't really care because honestly I don't really know uh, whether it's compliant with whatever um, strategy or patterns or, or, or whatnot. Uh, I try to get things there. And then I can always refactor later and get back to it and try to improve a bit but I wouldn't spend like a week refactoring something that doesn't have immediate effect because it's just not, I don't have this, 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 um, this feeling of achievement. Of course, that does not mean you have to be uh, um, unclear and your code should <coughs> be clear and commented and all that. And, and of course, a lot of patterns, and I don't even know if it's a pattern like state machine or stuff like that, you have to use and know because it's, it's uh, um, I guess, uh, it's difficult to avoid it. But let me give you an example of very um, what what I did, for example, was the uh, the rabbit the rabbit game. Um, for the movement of the rabbit game, I'm uh, the last time I've been taught maths was like 25 years ago. So to be honestly, um, I think this morning or yesterday you somewhat talked about trigonometry. For me, that is really a bad bad word. Uh, vectors and all that stuff very difficult for me. So I try to figure out what do I understand with this, all these crazy things about 3D, which is probably really difficult, which is the camera and the player movement, um, and trying to adjust all that together. It's really kind of complicated for uh, a non maths guy like me. So what I understand is a circle with degrees. And don't talk to me about radians, because that's even worse. So I just reason in degrees. And, and the way I coded stuff is I just thought, well, what sounds logic to me? To me, it sounds logic that the uh, rabbit is facing some sort of direction, and I just give it uh, a, a target angle, I would call it. So I want the rabbit to be at 90, 180, or 270 degrees. That's how I reason. It doesn't mean it makes any sense for anybody else. For me, it makes sense. So that's what made me do it, and I could do it. Um, and then I would have the input functions modified at target angle, and if the target angle is not how I want it, then I would just lerp uh, a rotation function so it rotates where I want it to be. And then learning step by step, first of all, of course, my rabbit would rotate directly from one angle to the other, so it would be like really robotic, it would be ugly. So another day I learned about lerping, and then another day I learned about fixing the problem of the rabbit going that way, and then you want him to go that way, and he gets all the way back. I googled, found it, learned it, took me a few hours, but it's like really step by step. And now it's probably completely crazy and shitty and doesn't look 
terrible, f it looks terrible for a lot of, a lot of um, scholar people, I would say, but for me it works, so why should I kind of break it now and do something else? Um, and also I talked about, I will talk about root motion a bit later, uh, but I now feed the root motion data into that so that he moves into the so-called target angle. And then in my code, I use this target angle all over the place to know where he is, so I know what, where he's facing all the time because of that. Pretty easy for me. So now he kind of turns. Whoops, he should turn, but he's not turning. Well, anyway, well, you've seen him turning before, so he turns, so I'm happy with that. So that's really about the dirty, dirty coding, I would call, but for me it works, so I'll do it. Also, I think the object-oriented code thing is very useful um, to achieve what I said before, which is the achievable target. Um, I have, um, when I started, I, uh, everything was kind of a mess, and I thought maybe this object-oriented thing is really good for me, um, spending only a few hours here and there on code. The more I make it object-oriented, the less I have problems breaking all my game by having connections all over the place and having things that interact. So then I thought, well, how do I do that? And I found this idea of the verb subject. I would say, if, for example, the bomb, what does it do? It explodes. So I would do the scripts on explosion. I would attach it to the bomb, clearly, because it's the thing that explodes. This machine there gives you keys. So it gives keys, so let's put this code in there. Going back to the bomb, um, the rabbit takes the bomb, so it takes the verbs as, uh, uh, with the, s the subject is the rabbit, so I would put the script on taking the bomb with the rabbit. Stuff like that, this kind of memotechnic stuff I do is to remember in my code what I do. So when I wait for the next weekend to work again on my project, uh, it's pretty easy for me. Also, I keep my game structure uh, very simple typically, so I would have a maximum of three sub-levels so I always can go back up. And I know that, for example, when I read what um, uh, GDQuest does, uh, Nathan, um, he's now uh, going very deep into how you code things, organize your code. And, and for me, it's a bit complicated. I don't have time for that. I have to have a very simple structure because for me, it's very easy to make a, a, a get parent, get node UI, for example. I get my UI because I know everything is on level two in my, in my tree. And I don't have to, I don't even have to map it. I know it's very easy for me. So that's how it works. Same thing for the, for the door. It just opens because it's the door. So it's uh, really, I s tend to try to stick to object-oriented code because it makes my life easier. And I get motivation. And also I get motivation from the fact that if something doesn't work, I take the object out of my scene and my scene works. It just doesn't break anything. Game assets also, I think, I mean, I've been doing my game assets, but, but with Blender, but for the only reason that I like doing it. So again, it's really this pleasure factor. Um, I think, on the other hand, if you are not into that, then you should use third-party assets, free assets. There are many free assets out there, and I don't think there's any shame or whatever in using free assets. Um, I have used them a lot in, as placeholders, and then I would replace them with my own stuff. Um, but again, only because I like that. Then of course, if you want to go to a finished game, then maybe you can buy some, some assets with the right license and stuff like that. In the end, I think what really counts a lot is gameplay. So if you get a good gameplay, whatever, who cares if the assets are kind of um, not that original. Um, also, uh, one thing I, I tried to do is um, I found that I learn better if I have a, a, a real purpose. Um, if, if I'm just trying to, out of blue, learn something, um, which is, I don't see the immediate effect on my game, I'm not so motivated, and I lose motivation very quickly. So the root motion is a good example. In the beginning, my, 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 um, <coughs> my rabbit would just walk around, and w I would just do what everybody does. I would add velocity, and that's it, and, and the velocity would always be the same. And, and I thought, um, I heard about root motion and the skater effect of this, uh, you know, player doing as he was skating because his animation is not synced with his movement. And, um, and but that just seemed too complicated to me. I read, I looked at the demo, um, uh, the demo, and because it is coded quick and dirty, <laughs> I had a bit trouble of understanding how root motion was used in the demo. So I give it up. 
And later I came across this um, rabbit problem. The rabbit has little feet, so he's walking very slowly. And it's kind of boring if you have to cross the whole map. So I said, I have to make him roll so he can roll much faster through the map. And so I started doing a rolling animation. And then in the rolling animation, I noticed, um, now I really have to be able to click on the play button. So if you look at the play button, the, the rabbit is rolling, but his, his uh, collision stuff is kind of staying on the spot. And that's really stupid. That doesn't work. I mean, he would kind of roll into walls, and his collision shape would still be sitting behind him. And so that's why I thought, well, maybe I need to kind of understand root motion because maybe this can solve my problem. So I went back to the demo, <laughs> tried to really understand it, and then I understood root motion, and now the rabbit is rolling correctly because the root motion is giving the animation, or at least the code, the information about how to sync the animation with the movement. So learn with a purpose. And when I really achieved that, you can really imagine the pleasure I had to do that. So again, this is... This gave me boost for a few other weeks of uh, getting the game done. Um, next thing is also achievable objectives for me. I, I even applied this to, um, to the game itself. Um, because again, um, this, came up, this came up in the game when I tried to, to play the game. I was showing it to my son and he was saying, okay, so you have your rabbit. And then there is the loop, the roof. So the rabbit should do some crazy kung fu moves and hit the roof. And then the roof does this and that, etc., and crazy animations and all that stuff. And I was getting all pale in the face and saying, "Oh shit, I can't do that." For it will take me months to do that and kung fu moves and whatever. So um, what I did is also uh, another problem I had is the roof is coded again very dirty. The, his artificial intelligence is very stupid. He's going he's going from one position 3D to another position 3D. He's moving around, and he's uh, moving slide stuff. So if I go into his way, he starts doing crazy things. And when he does crazy things, he has problems getting back to his next position 3D. So how do I fix this? So what I did is I just adapted my gameplay. Whenever I come close to this wolf, and because this is a non-violent game, he just looks at me and turns around. So I will lerp him better and see what I can do in terms of animation. Maybe he can do like this to the rabbit, who cares? But at least I've solved my problem, you know? It's a game design, I just solved my problem. And if I come too close to him, he's got a ray cast and he sends me back. And this is non-violent, so there's no problem. I just adapted my game design to my own capacities, which are very <coughs> limited. So that's maybe also a trick. Rather than trying to invent the new Assassin's Creed move, trying to adapt whatever you can do to, to, uh, to the project. Okay, and I'm almost through with this. Um, I think the last thing I would give uh, as an maybe not advice because just humbly my experience is involving the community is really a good thing because if you involve the community um, of course you can get advice on technical issues which is already a very nice thing um, and I found that the community um, typically on Twitter is a very toxic community generally speaking uh, as soon as you get into politics and whatever, it really gets sometimes very dirty. But the game dev community, I'm always surprised, uh, whether it be on, on Twitter or, or on Reddit, um, is very um, positive, I think. You get a lot of encouragement, um, and you also get a lot of feedback. And I think that's extremely important when you have a game to get feedback. You can improve your game, but it's also encouraging you, of course. And again, it gives you motivation. If people see you sing and say, oh, that's great, or they, they help you improving it, it's kind of really boosting, it's a boost for your motivation. So I think this is something to be done. Have your game play, play tested. That's also um, something very nice. I have a session planned with my 12-year-old my, my, uh, boy and all his friends, and I look forward to that. It will be crazy. They will all be playing with this rabbit and probably breaking everything and doing stuff that was not planned to be done, like, like trying to climb on the trees or whatever. But um, I think this will be very rewarding. So again, a boost in the pleasure factor, uh, a gamification of game dev, and therefore more motivation and help to get the game de done. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have, do you have any questions for the blue rabbit? I can ask him. <laughs> yeah, 
this far? Um, I started, I think, like something like six months ago, and maybe I I I, I would spend maybe seven or eight hours a week or something like that um, in little pieces. So again, I'm not very good at math, so you should calculate. <laughs> but uh, no, again, I think Godot um, enables you to have results very fast, so you can quickly get something done. And for example, if I hadn't done the modeling myself, it would have taken much less time, I guess. Yes? Hi. I really like the non-violent approach you're taking, especially with these assets. What made you pick that? Uh, yeah. Well, I was having a discussion with uh, Tim over there the other day that that game is kind of getting a bit more mature, I would say. And uh, there's like a tendency with a lot of games now that are, that are kind of um, trying to get a message through. And, um, and honestly, if I, it just came naturally to me that I don't want to make another game where people kill each other. Uh, and so basically I think that's that's the idea, you know, trying to get something a bit funnier and, and getting a pleasant experience now. Don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> Other questions? Hi, thank you for your talk. And um, this, look, this game looks really nice, and can we see those dirty hacks somewhere? Is the source code <laughs> available, or is this going to be a commercial product and therefore you would rather not? Uh, um, to be honest, um, as I said, first, I'm, I'm, I'm in a legal business, so I'm <laughs> always very hesitant and, and careful, and, and so I'm looking at what I'm doing. I haven't decided yet, maybe I'll, I'll do that. I, I, do, I do put some stuff, I, I started the WordPress um, where I put the root motion thing, I think it's called Blue Rabbit um, WordPress or something. And I will probably put some stuff in there, but to be honest, because I code very dirty, I don't really think, I don't feel like it's uh, a big help to the community. Some stuff I'm proud of, I guess I would put somewhere on a GitHub, I guess. I probably shouldn't say this because uh, you know that when, when your your possibilities sometimes are limited, it boosts more your creativity. But uh, did you try checking? We we had a tutorial section for math in the Godot documentation, uh, which tries to explain like exactly for people who don't really like to learn mm. math the math way. Uh, uh, I was just wondering if you tried to read it and if it maybe mm. you found it too difficult or maybe we should mm. try to change anything. Uh, no. I, I was just trying to make a point, <laughs> okay. but to be honest, to be honest, I think it's very well made, and it's it's you just have to dig into it. The only thing, my point was really more about you know you have to, we have different ways of thinking all of ourselves, and so I guess you have to try maybe to to use your own way of thinking and getting solutions done. But once you've done that, typically my rabbit movement has a lot of problems and. I will dig into the uh, the documentation again and uh, not the documentation. We have math tutorials, yeah, math tutorials, and which are for just for people who don't like <laughs> or, do, or, <laughs> don't, exactly. or don't. Because if you go into Wikipedia yeah. and you want to learn something, you will yeah. see all the math symbols and you will. Uh, I don't understand that. <laughs> exactly. So uh, this is where we made the math tutorials mm -hmm. uh, in the Godot website, which are means specifically for people who yeah. are not intended to be engineers or you just want to make games, you just learn to, you just, the math is not too complicated, mm -hmm. so you want it presented in a way that you actually want to learn it. It was very fun because a few days ago on Twitter, I think somebody was saying that he was happy because the, the tutorials helped, helped him with the math uh, homework, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just, just uh, I was just wondering, uh, but if so you uh, didn't check the yeah, math, I, I checked it, I checked it, and it's very, it's very well You will made. get more yeah. power, and this will be more yeah. responsibility. So I actually <laughs> tried to show it to my daughter, who is uh, doing vectors at school right now, oh and, nice. and, and I show her this, the vector part, which was very clear, so yeah. One last question. Okay, thanks guys.